I love it, Scooter, when you get the lineup. Yeah, but I'll butcher it. Leading you off, the master has never butchered everything <laughs> or <Rep> anything. <laughs> Roberto <laughs> Kelly will lead off. Steve Sachs batting second. Don Mattingly hits third. Steve Balboni in the cleanup spot, the DH. Jesse Barfield batting fifth. Jim Leyritz batting sixth. Mike Blau is in action tonight, batting seventh. Bob Guerin catching and batting eighth. And Alvaro Espinosa hitting ninth. I like that. Mike Blauer's in action tonight. You just kind of slide that in there, didn't you? A little bit. Now we got a couple of veteran left-handers out there. This guy's had a couple operations, hasn't he? Jimmy Key going for the Toronto Blue Jays back from a stint in Dunedin in Florida on a rehabilitation program, a medical rehab. He had pulled a right hamstring and Ooh. has not pitched since May 22nd. He was covering first base and pulled a hamstring. That was against the Oakland Athletics, and he must have really torn it and has been out and pitching on a rehab program, and this is his first start, his ninth start of the season. Stump Merrill, the manager of the New York Yankees, playing the best baseball that they have played since Stump was named manager in Boston. And he is without the hot bat of Mel Hall, who is supposed to arrive sometime during the game. His whereabouts unknown. Roberto Kelly will lead it off for New York. And in there for strike one, we'll take a quick look at the Toronto Blue Jays defense. George Bell, Mookie Wilson, and Junior Felix in the outfield. Uh, up and in, and it's one and one. And on the infield, Kelly Gruber, Tony Fernandez at short, Manny Lee at second, John Olrood at first, and Pat Borders does the catching. For Roberto Kelly, who last night made a dazzling catch. Boy, this was a great play. Time beautiful. Look at that. Boy, that saved a run for the Yanks last night, and Kelly leads it off with a base hit here in the first inning for the Yanks. The Yanks won last night, seven to six. And we'll take another look at that base hit, Scooter. Yeah, though, I tell you, the Yankee hitters kind of drool when a left-hand pitcher is out there. They don't get to see too many of them. George Bell looks like he's all right tonight. He crashed into the wall, too, made a great catch. Kelly was one for five last night and came in hitting 287. That'll bring up Steve Sachs hitting 272. Kelly, 14 out of 20 in stolen bases. And the top two hitters in the Yankee lineup, Kelly and Sachs, are 32 and 9 in stolen bases. That's 32 stolen bases and nine times is all they've been thrown out. Good, good percentage. Outside ball one. New York with a record of 24 and 40. They are 13 games behind the Toronto Blue Jays who lead the American League East by a game and a half over the Boston Red Sox. Right on that outside corner and strike one. Yeah, I thought there were a lot more games behind. That's not too bad. I remember one year in 78, the Yankees were 14 games behind and ended up winning the pennant. Still a lot of games to go, Scooter. Yep. I mean, there's 100 games to play. I mean, the baseball That's season isn't a long. No. <laughs> no. no. Uh. Let's see. The Yankees, 24 and 40. That means they may played 64 games. There's only 98 to play. 98. <laughs> you know, the amazing thing we're talking about Mel Hall not being here. Any other job, you got a right to call in once in a while. Say, look, I'm not feeling well. I'm not going to be there tonight. But baseball, you're not you're not allowed to do that. You got to be out there every day, rain or shine, in sickness and in health. And poor, <laughs> I do. Tom said, but. Every inning, and it, it's oh, no, no, Every no, no, no. John Moore put those words in my mouth. I, I did not say that. But a ball player, really. 
That's fouled off to the right side. The roof is on here at the Sky Dome in Toronto. This is some stadium. Now, wait a minute. You just said, you know, what? in California, they say roof. In Brooklyn, we say roof. In Toronto, I don't know what they say. They you didn't have any dogs then when you grew up. What do you mean I didn't have any dogs? I always you had, had to dog. make your own sound. Roof. <laughs> right? But no. no. Is that I, what you're scared, remember, of, scared of burglar no, away? Oh, no, no. But I remember Jerry Pretty was from California. That's why he'd say it. And to us, it sounded really odd. But to you, it doesn't. Roof. <laughs> he was the... He was the... Uh, wasn't he the all-time home run leader for the Yankees? No, no. Babe Ruth? Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> Well, I'm trying, Scooter. I know. It's all right. Listen. Two and two to Sachs. And he's really freezing Roberto Kelly at first base. Now, they had a great uh, sequence of pitches in the paper today about how a left-hander can hold runners at first base without balking. And I was a little surprised that one of them wonders what he's doing now. You can hold that leg out there for a long time. And if he goes, you can still step him and, and throw him to first base or to second base. But also, I, as you start to come home, you can step. As long as you step a little bit towards first, you can throw there. That'll be fouled on the right side. As long as the lead foot doesn't break the plane. Yes, that's another one. That's uh, the rubber. If you could... Look at the rubber on the mound and draw a line through the top of it toward first base and toward third. As long as it doesn't go in back of the rubber relative to home plate, then the pitcher really has an option. That's right. If he goes, the foot goes behind that rubber, that lead foot, when the left hander leaves, lifts that right foot and it goes behind the rubber, then he must go home. Uh huh. But Kelly is really uncertain at first base. Oh. That'll be a base hit to right field, and Kelly will go all the way to third. So the Yanks picking right up where they left off last night. Two consecutive singles. And the offense coming alive here. Well, I tell you, that is great to see. Three and two, Sachs just guarding the plate. A quick, short, snappy swing. Mookie cuts it off before he gets in the gap. As he does so very well, going to right field. Yep. And for the Yanks to get healthy. And really my feeling there's only a couple things that have to happen. Yes. To make them significantly better. Yes, yes. This guy at the plate right here has got a hit. Oh, yeah. Oh. He's got a snap out of it. And that young kid at third base. Oh, Blau. Who is down there tonight. You made a great point he, last night. He yes. can supply some pop for you. And if the Yanks could do that. It's going to take a lot of pressure off of everybody in the entire lineup. So Mattingly with runners at first and third and nobody out. Now they got the makings of a big inning here. Mattingly's got to try and stay out of the double play. Get that run in. And they'll check sacks at first. Your point well taken, Scooter. They got the makings of a big inning. Mm. And it's something that the Yanks on a whole for most of the season have not been able to recognize or not been able to capitalize on. Oh, no. A double play. Oh. <laughs> They'll get a run across, but not the way that they wanted to and certainly not the way that Don Mattingly wanted to get him in. The Toronto Blue Jays will take it 4-6-3. Double play. And the Yanks go on top, one to nothing. Look at John. He hit the ball right on the nose, but no RBI. And as Tom said, very quickly, nobody on and two out. Taylor made double play. Steve Balboni, his average at 185, and last night. Balboni was one for five. And that's where a newspaper a lot of times is misleading. He got a base hit his last time up and was 0 for 4, but was robbed. Oh, I mean, yes. robbed of two extra base hits last night. Right. 
Gruber robbed him of a base hit in the third inning. I mean, he make a sparkling play at third base. And then George Bell took an extra base hit, base hit away from him in the eighth inning. He could have been three for five with two doubles. Very even easy. though he, even though he can't run a lick. That's right. As somebody I know very well has said. <laughs> is one of those. Is his Bell's catch? Watch that uh, left foot. I think it there, right there. Ooh. High and deep hey. to left field. Will he do it again? No, he won't catch this one. And Steve Balboni swinging a very hot bat. I'm and a big, and I mean big, Scooter, two out home run. Another thing the Yanks have not been doing, getting yeah, two out runs, getting right. the two out hit. And I tell you, I told you, their, their mouth waters when a left hand pitcher gets out there. They don't get to see them too often. Oh man, that was a quick swing. Had the bat out in front. No chance for Bell. So it is two to nothing. And Steve Balboni, home run number six, RBI number 14. And Bones has to feel a little bit of satisfaction after hitting the ball very well last night and just coming up with a one base hit. It'll bring up Jesse Barfield. Barfield at 253, 11 home runs and 34 RBIs. And that leads the club in those two categories. Has yeah, hit very well on the road. In about two, almost 290 on the road. Mm -hmm. Hitting about 280 for the last month. And he sure figured something out. Yeah, he worked hard at it. Throwing the bat a lot better. <laughs> On the outside corner, and it's two balls and two strikes. That was the ninth home run that Jimmy Key has given up this year. And the 50th that the Yankees have hit. Inside and the count goes full three and two. That's bounce foul and it'll stay. Full at three and two to give you an idea about the 50 home runs. Toronto Blue Jays have 91. Wow. You get that's quick run scoring. You know it's amazing the Blue Jays are heading this league by a game and a half and they are only playing 500 baseball at home. 18 and 18 at home. That is unbelievable. Foul straight back and it's still three and two. The way this ball jumps out of this ballpark. And with the club they've got. You may have hit 15 or 20 home runs if you didn't have played in a place like this, I huh? Th I think so. I had a pretty good chance. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Struck him out. Key comes back to strike out Barfield, but not before the Yanks. Get a couple of runs on three base hits. We go to the bottom of the first here at the Sky Dome. Sky Dome, it's the Yankees two. And the Blue Jays coming up.
isn't easy. Getting a long-distance call through on AT&T is, even from non-AT&T public phones. Just dial 10-ATT-0 and the phone number. AT&T. 10-ATT-0. Just to make getting through your day a little easier. AT&T. How can we help you? Hey, Yankee fans, here are two great ways to enjoy all the summertime fun at the stadium. On Saturday, July 7th, Coca-Cola presents Yankee Glove Day as the Yanks battle the Twins at 3 o'clock. All fans 14 and under will receive a free Yankee baseball glove. Then on Sunday, July 8th, Gatorade presents Yankee Sports Bag Day at 1.30, and all fans will receive a free Yankee Sports Bag. So make a double play with the Yanks for this giveaway weekend. Get your tickets now. Quick look at the lineup for the Blue Jays. Junior Felix leads off. Tony Fernandez hits second. Kelly Gruber batting third. George Brell in the cleanup spot. John Oldwood, what a night he had last night. Hits fifth. Pat Border sixth. Glen Allen Hill seventh. Manny Lee eighth. And Mookie Wilson ninth. Made the point on the mound for the Yanks. And got a two run cushion going in. The point four and six with an earned average of four point two. Making his 15th seventh 15th start for New York. And the Blue Jays mainly a fastball hitting ball club. And a guy like LaPointe, if he keeps the ball down and out of the hitting zone upstairs, should do well. He did not do very well his last start against this ball club last Sunday in New York. He lost 8 to 1 to the Blue Jays. And he gave up six earned runs. That's the most that he has given up. Eight runs that they scored, two of them unearned. And Manny Lee and Fred McGriff hit home runs off of him. And McGriff's was a three-run shot. When McGriff out of the lineup because of a sore wrist, he had a cortisone shot in his wrist yesterday, so he was out of the Toronto Blue Jays lineup. His replacement at first <laughs> doesn't get the bad part. The, that's the good news. The bad news is the replacement doesn't get any easier. Nope. Junior Felix, a long throw. Oh! Good play by Mattingly. Espinosa makes a fine play, backhanding the ball and as it skidded. And Mattingly, hope he didn't hurt his shoulder scooping that ball out of the dirt. That was a tough hop, too, Tom. Tough hop. He threw it hard. Yep. And one of the great things about knowing you got a first baseman that has great hands, you just let her fly over there. And that's what they're paying Don Maddenly for. That's he's supposed to make that play. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely supposed to make that play. Gold Glover. You expect it too. And Felix can get down that line. Yeah. That'll bring up Tony Fernandez. Fernandez hitting 273. For three last night, he walked a couple of times and had a double in the fifth. Two home runs, 28 RBIs, and a little soft dead fish. <laughs> Out of this boy, Pat gets in the strike zone. There isn't a whole lot you can do with it, I'll tell you that. Well, it must have been inside. Jim Joyce behind the plate tonight. Fernandez, he's not a big, strong guy, but he holds the little finger of the left hand off the bat like the big sluggers. Oh, that's going to be trouble if it takes a big bounce. Good play by Espinosa. Oh, gets him. look at Espy. I tell you, he had to throw that ball while he was up in the air, and when he came down, his feet slipped, and he sat right down on his backside. But what a... The kid is so unbelievable at making, doing the right thing at the right time. As Tom said, couldn't waste a fraction of a second. Now, watch this. Oh, he cut a spike in, in the turf, which is so easy to do. He lays back on the ball, you're dead. 
And he did get injured a little bit last night. There's no way you can lay back on the ball. No. You've got to well. come in. If the ball bounces over your head, you know, Sachs is behind you. Yep. And it'll just be an infield single. But on this turf, with a big bounce, you've got to come in and catch up to it before it gets too high. Kelly Gruber, the third place hitter for the Blue Jays. And a two bouncer to Blowers. And cannot make the play. That's going to be an E5. So Mike Blowers back in the lineup. And an easy play. And he was a little tentative down there. Scooter. Yes, he it was. Like yeah. He wasn't one sure if it was going to be Espinosa's ball or what. He took his eye up, took his eye up and hit the side of his glove and didn't get it in the pocket. You have to play defense the same way you hit, and that's aggressive. And you got to go after that ball. It's a shame because they would have gotten through this inning without Bell coming up. Yep. Oh, boy, you're learning those things. Well, you last night like one of the great. Scooter. Gray, I listen when the master of pitching oh, speaks to me. I remember. <laughs> George Bell, who had a pretty fair night last night. Where did he hit that second home run? Oh, uh, just down there above that 328 sign down the left field line. 328. People stood up in front of me. I couldn't see it when he hit it. Mm -hmm. One of them was a midget. <laughs> <laughs> He's terrible. You're a terrible I am not. <laughs> Bell with 14 home runs and 50 RBIs. He's where he's got to throw him that, as Tom says, a dead fish. He's looking for that fastball. And he wants something on the middle, from the middle of the plate in. And if the point's going to come inside. He's going to come inside off the plate. That's yeah, good pitch All right there. All right. This is the old classic hard stuff in, soft stuff away. Uh huh. And you better not make a mistake because that's when George Bell will kill you. Right on that outside corner. Two balls and a strike to LaPointe. Excuse me to Bell. 328 down the line, 375 in the alleys here at the Sky Dome. Straight away center field, 400 and a symmetrical field. 328 down the line and right, and 7, 375 in the right field alley. Very antiseptic. Yeah. That's the only thing that I don't like about it. But they're going to make a ton of money. Outside and it's three and one. Well, I'd rather see him do that than give in to him. Oh, you just can't make a mistake inside, especially no. in this ballpark. And I would not throw him a fastball. Mm -mm. Oh boy. Just what you said. He threw him a Scroogey or a split finger or something that was about an inch off the ground <laughs> and Bell couldn't stop it. Took something off it again. Yep. And it was a 3 1 changeup. And I got to go with a little backdoor slider here, Scooter. All Bell's, right. Bell's yeah. not going to be up there to take, you know uh -uh. that. And yeah. if you make a mistake inside, Dave LaPointe does not throw hard enough. To make a mistake no. inside and get away with it. If he makes a mistake from the middle half in, he's going to get killed. Yep. And he'll be over anxious. And if you just put it a little outside, he's liable to go for it. He Way got on it. Oh, oh, oh. Woo. What a job of pitching. David Point comes back and strikes out Bell, and the Blue Jays come up with a zero in their half of the first. And after one inning to play here at the Sky Dome of Toronto. It's the Yanks too, and the Blue Jays nothing. The New York State Lottery presents tonight's daily number and win four drawing. 
The winning numbers will be selected automatically from left to right, just as they appear on your ticket. Tonight's drawing is conducted and supervised by the New York State Lottery under the observation of an independent auditor from Coopers and Librad. Good evening, I'm Sarah President. Now here's the daily number for today, Friday, June 22nd, 1990. And the first ball up is three. The next number is three. And the last number is five. That makes tonight's daily number three, three, five. And now here's Judy Hogan with tonight's win four number. Thank you, Sarah. And don't forget to see your agent for details on win four bonus days. And now for tonight's win four number, the first ball up is four. The next number is zero. The next number is three. And the last number is eight. That makes the win four number four, zero, three, eight. Congratulations to all your winners. because Toyota will do whatever it takes to stay number one. Oh, I think we saved around 1,500, maybe 2,000. So I was very pleased. Jenny, how's it going? Squire, for summer Toyota Fun, Toyota dealers are offering factory incentives and savings on factory options. Even on Tercel, Toyota's most affordable car. With Toyota Fun deals like these, they're going to sell 115,000 this month. But you better hurry. Summer Toyota Fun is going fast. We move to the top of the second inning here at Sky Dome. And the Yanks up two to nothing. Three hits in the top of the first and a big two out home run by Steve Balboni. And they get a two spot. They're going to need more if they're going to beat the Blue Jays, I'm afraid, in yeah. this ballpark. Yep. Entertained in between innings here in Toronto at the Sky Dome by Cab Calloway. And what's the name of that song, oh, Scooter? Man. Well, we get it to Heidi, Heidi Ho, but it was Minnie the Moocher. He doesn't say Heidi, Heidi Ho. What does he say? Heidi, Heidi, Heidi Ho. Oh, you want to see Seabus? He doesn't. Move. Hey. I want to tell you, he's got more moves than I. <laughs> you're he right. He doesn't you're, say you're, Heidi, you're, Heidi Ho. You're right. That's that little extra one in there. And then he goes, woody, 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 like that. That's one of my favorite <laughs> songs of all time. I tell you, he I was. Love it. He was really great. Still doing it. He got the long white tails on. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Jim Leyritz, that'll be in play for a key. Called fair by home plate umpire Jim Joyce and one out here in the second. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> one if, he, if you could just see him with those moves he's got. I, Scooter, I'm going to make you do the disclaimer. No, 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 no. My hero of, I tell you, I got to tell you a story about Seba. Saving my wallet and possibly my life last night. I did what? When you gave me the squash racket to take home, I told you that story. A I, broken squash racket. A broken squash racket. But Mike Flowers, let me get this in. Mike Flowers for the Yanks here with one out. You got to do your coffee anyway. Let me get this because my every time I think of what happened last night, I get. Nervous. You, you got more people waiting on you than I can't believe. Every place we go, you got six or seven people bringing you well, coffee. They know, and how. I'm one of them. <laughs> I don't know how I got sucked into that job. <laughs> Outside to Blowers, and it's a ball and two strikes. Okay. Blowers got recalled from Columbus on Wednesday. He got a break when the error didn't cost the Yankees. So yep. now let's see him make a little hay. Right in there for strike three. He had to be guessing. That looked like a fastball, didn't it? Right? Fastball with middle end. Didn't look like it was on the corner either. And for Jimmy Key, his second strikeout. Well, that's a good oh, pitch to hit right man. there. Wow. That's crush time right there. Yes, it is. So you went home last night with my squash rack. Oh, I it's a good thing I did. I got I took the subway for the first time in my life. And now I know what it feels like. I've seen it in the movies so often. You get off the subway and the whole platform is empty. Not a living soul on. I couldn't believe it. Every other station there were tons of people getting on and off. I got off and luckily I had the you showed me that grip with the with the squash racket how to hold it at just that little angle. And it, I mean did you hit somebody. I took a swing at one guy two guys came down the steps as I was getting near ready to go up. 
And the one guy says, buddy, you got the time? And the other guy was trying to circle him back at me. I said, get lost, and I took my, put the squash racket back and ran up the escalator. Did you swing at him? I never touched the ground. I just. Bob Guerin, fly ball to center field. And that'll be the third out. A one, two, three inning for Jimmy Key. We'll get more on the Phil Rizzuto saga when we come back at the top of the second. It's two to nothing Yankees. We're not going to pause for a station identification. Kip and Henry are bosom buddies. When they get rolling, it's pure comedy magic. <laughs> You're taking out a girl who still believes Bambi can talk. <laughs> They're the funniest guys around. Gloria's had her hand in the hormone jar. And the ladies they live with are the sexiest on television. On to the hot tub. Bye. <laughs> Every day, the laughs are right here on Bosom Buddy. Starts Monday at 7.30 on Channel 11. The Yankees against the Blue Jays, Sunday at 1.30 on Channel 11. Loaded with features, built for speed, and with full-range autofocus, it can stop on a dime. The newest VHS camcorder from JVC. We just made recorded history again. Once you consider the complications of other camcorders, the best plug for JVC is no plug at all. It fits right in your VHS VCR. JVC. We just made recorded history again. Okay, bring it forward a little bit. Keep it coming. It ain't gonna fit, Charlie. Just trust me. When you hold it, hold it there. Just lower it a little bit. Charlie, hold it ain't it. gonna fit. Now, take it easy. Just be gentle with okay, it, it'll okay. be fine. Just lower it, it a ain't little bit. Fit. More. Okay. Just lower it. Sorry, Charlie. Take it easy. Come on. Yeah, I knew it wouldn't fit. Wait, get, get it up. Come on, get it coming. I knew it wouldn't fit. No way. If it's out there, it's in here. I knew it wouldn't fit. The 9X Yellow Pages. Why would anyone need another? Bottom of the second inning here in Toronto, the Yanks leading this one two to nothing. It'll be John Olrue, Pat Borders, and Glenn Allen Hill for the Blue Jays. And Dave LaPointe, a quick strike on Olrue. Some night he had last night. Oh, boy. Olrue, two home runs, a single, base on balls. And when Dave Rigetti came in, and gave up a home run to George Bell in the bottom of the ninth inning. That made the score seven to six. And then another man got on, and then Glenn Allen Hill, I mean, excuse me, then John Olrude hit, Olrude hit a line drive to Steve Sachs, possibly had it gotten by him, gone into the alley in right center on this artificial surface, and we could have had a tie game, oh, but man. Sachs knocked it down. So he. Is really swinging a good bat. I bet you Alan Mills was relieved, huh? His first win. His first big major league. league win, sure. Kid looked great last night. All right, let's get back to this scooter. Oh. You 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 left you left the ballpark. You took my squash racket, which was broken. That's why I gave it to you. But it still was All solid right. enough to right. whack somebody. And with. you went up toward your hotel on the subway and got off, and you're going up, and two guys come down are going to case you, right? Day. Oh man. Hard to right field. And Jesse Barfield puts it away and there's one out. Kids are tough out. But anyway, I knew it was trouble as soon as I saw them come down. Unshaven, you know, messy hair and just and when the guy they asked me what time it was, they had no idea looking at my watch. They were either going after my pocket, that's why I say you saved my money and possibly my life in a beating because when I took the rack and brought it back, they sort of flinched, you know, and that's when right up the escalator. You took a hike right there, huh? I don't think I touched any of the steps on the way up. I just... Now, did you swing at him? Yeah, I took one swing, and that really set now, the back. Did you miss him? Miss yeah, him? I didn't mean to miss him. <laughs> that was my next question. <laughs> no, but <laughs> it did the trick. It, You know, it just enough to get me by them, and then they, they started after me, but I was gone. I didn't even turn and look back. How far was it to your hotel? About three blocks. I mean, three seemed long, longest blocks I ever ran. Pat Borders with one out. Now, did you, what was the heart rate when you got to the hotel? Oh, did I'd you run all the way to the all hotel? All the way. 
got in the lobby and then finally just did took your a feet touch the ground I I doubt it I really do I mean it's it's amazing what you can do when the adrenaline starts flowing <laughs> scooter are you uh, taking a cab home tonight or are you going to go oh, to the subway yeah. oh wait I got a cab waiting I already made the arrangements <laughs> Pat Borders, a base hit. Oh, it's going to get by Kelly. And Borders is going to end up on second. That should be a hit and an error. Well, I don't think it'll be a hit and an error, Tom. You would have took, oh, must have taken a bad be. hop, and he, he caught it with, he went after with his bare hand, but it was a great backing up job by Barfield. I tell you, Barfield's not back there. This must have hit a seam or something. Watch Kelly as he goes after it. See, kick to the right. Kick back off. You're exactly right. Kick back to the left, and I think they scored it a two-base hit. I haven't heard a officially yet, but that's the first hit for the Blue Jays. Good hustle by Jesse Barfield. You can tell that he spent a lot of years that's over right. at Exhibition yeah, Stadium right. playing on the artificial surface and knows the importance of backing up, especially on this artificial surface. Glenn Allen Hill, the DH for the Blue Jays tonight, hitting 217, six home runs, and 15 RBIs. There you can see the base hit and no air. The Yanks already with an air, Mike Blowers, and the second air not put up, so it must have been a double. I've got yeah. my headset on, I can't. What did they say? Double? I didn't hear. Yes. It. It Our statist statistician here says double. So. Okay. For Borders, that was his 12th double of the year. Out in front, Les Minosa going to have a long throw. No. That's unusual to see that ball get by Espy. I think he thought he had it and just didn't get the glove down far enough. I think if there is one area of Espy's game that would be subject to criticism, Scooter. It would be playing the infield on artificial surface. He does not have the best range no, of right. people in the American League. What he gets to, he catches. And when you play on the artificial surface, it just shows up just a little bit more, and that's a perfect example. It's going to happen once or twice in a series where you have a ball like that. Uh huh. That if it were on natural surface, he would be able to come He's, up with it. He right. may not be able to make the play on that anyway, but he would have kept the runner from going to third base. Right. I think I still got a chance for the double play. Manny Lee, the switch hitting second baseman for Toronto. Yeah, the runners at first and third. Lee with six home runs, 15 RBIs. Got some pop in his bat right handed. We cannot take him for granted hitting from this side. Center field with that enough to get a run in. He's going to hold it third. How do you like that? Holy cow. Pat Borders, who does not run well, holds it third. And you know, he doubled clutch. Kelly couldn't get the ball out of his glove right away. I wonder if Borders uh, misunderstood the coach. Well, he misjudged it. Kelly misjudged it slightly yeah, in center right. field. He's new here inside. The dome is closed tonight. It was open last night and he had almost has to take a double take came in a little bit too far. I think he expected the runner to have the play made especially yeah. when he had to lay back on the ball. Yep. Big break big break right there. John McLaren the coach at third base. And that'll bring up Mookie Wilson. So the Yanks get a break here. In there for strike one. Well, Mookie's not had too much success against Yankee pitching. Let's see if LaPointe can keep it that way. Mookie just two hits in his last 22 times to the plate. Oh, oh look wow. out! Look out! Holy cow! Yeah, I don't know whether Blowers saw that right away. He didn't saw it. Wow! 
He saw it and did an ole. Mookie way out in front of the off speed pitch. Oh boy. And the nice part about that is, is that Mookie didn't hit the ball. Uh, yeah. Now watch this, Scooter. And think about playing third base on this. Ooh. Yep, he saw it. That happened to me one time. Came over on the bench. And you know the bat when it's going, it's yeah, swirling around like a helicopter, right? Did you? Hit me right in the no. back of the head. On the bench? <laughs> I couldn't get away. I didn't know which way to go. I faked left, went right, and by the time I didn't make a decision, it was way too late. How it serious? Was coming. No, I didn't. It wasn't serious. I mean, <laughs> my head. <laughs> I mean, as hard as my head is. All right. Now he's at way ahead on the count. No balls, two strikes. They'll check Hill at first. Hill four stolen bases in five attempts. And these Blue Jays have some runners that can run at good speed. Just outside. And it's a ball and two strikes. Borders doubled with one out. Glenn Allen Hill had a single. And Borders made it to third, but the fly ball to center field by Manny Lee did not get him home. That's fouled out of play. And Manny Lee have a play? No, it's in the seats. The point that time came with that good slide step real quick. Then Allen Hill had a big lead that time, one foot way on the artificial surface. He's done it again. Struck oh. him out. How? Oh, the Blue Jays got a couple men on, but Dave LaPointe, what a great job he does, Scooter, and come back and getting them, huh? Well, I want to tell you something. And on that Dodge scoreboard at the end of the second inning, unbelievable, but it's the Yankees two and the Blue Jays nothing. Competitive car market, there's one place that gives you the advantage. The advantage of Dodge Spirit. More interior room, a standard driver's airbag, and a lower price than Honda Accord. Now there's a great selection of spirits, some as low as 213 a month. The advantage of Dodge Shadow, more horsepower, and a longer powertrain warranty than Honda Civic DX Hatchback. There's hundreds in stock, some as low as 180 a month. For the cars that beat the Hondas, it's advantage Dodge. The city and everything's cooking. Everything's looking good. No one must know about her or what she's done. This is the time. Ah! Surely you can't be serious. Don't call me Shirley. This is the place. <laughs> this is the summer on Channel 11, New York's movie station. Top of the third inning here at the Sky Dome. The Yankees on top two to nothing. As we told you before, Mel Hall was not here at the start of the game. And George Grand was able to track him down after the game has started down by the Yankee clubhouse. And you ran into Mel Hall, George, correct? This time I talked to Mel Hall as he entered the ballpark and he entered the Yankee clubhouse at 811, which was just about nine minutes ago now. And he was in New York. He left. Toronto this morning at 5:30 a.m. flew to Montreal, then flew to New York to take care of a family problem, and was scheduled to come back this afternoon. But the flights were backed up. He said he called Stump Merrill and said that if all went right, he would be back about 6:30. But 
the flight from Newark back here was delayed and then getting from the airport to here took over an hour. He wouldn't comment specifically on the family problem, but he did indicate that he left here at 5.30 this morning to go to New York to deal with a family matter, and he is back in the ballpark at this hour. Uh, did he say anybody, it was it an illness, or is everybody okay, or he wouldn't comment? He on? said, yes, everything is okay. It was just a family matter that had to be dealt with. And he will talk with Stump Merrill. Stump Merrill said before the game that he would reserve any comment any further comment other than that Mel would be late and he would also reserve any punishment until he had a chance to get all the facts from Mel Hall and I'm certainly that'll go for Pete Peterson George Bradley and the Yankees Espinosa hits it a long way but Mookie Wilson able to run it down and there's one out in the top of the third we'll take a look at Espinosa, he gets a high hanging off speed pitch scooter oh, and man. waited nicely, didn't he? Yes, he did very well, but he's like I am. He's got that warning track power, and that doesn't do you any good. WTP. Yep. I like that. WTP. Those pitchers know who has the WTP, and they laugh when we come up. Roberto Kelly singled his first time up and scored the Yankees' first run. Well, I hope everything is okay with Mel Hall and his family. And yeah, we got glad he's here. Yes, we had Dick Tracy on. On the case and George Grant. Oh, that's <laughs> a private eye number one. We yep. got the master and private eye number one. <laughs> oh, base in left field. It's okay. Roberto Kelly is two for two. And he got that bat looked about 10 feet long the way he swung it and whipped it around out in front but he's keeping the bat in the hitting zone a long yes. time that is great I mean, that's... and he keeps that front shoulder closed and is able to at least put the ball in play he Look went through a that, long period man. scooter remember when he couldn't even, he wouldn't even put yeah. it in play nope oh. and that was a saying that's the same oh. pitch that he was just totally missing before yep couldn't figure out why Ed coming off the ball. Now he's right on it. You know, Steve Sachs, who he also had a single his first time up. And you can see Kelly at first base and is not comfortable getting the lead off of Jimmy Key. He just, half the time he's all right, half the time he's going back toward the bag. Sachs checking with Buck Showalter to see if the hit and run might be on, if the steal is on. He is really freezing him. That's going to be a tough play for Key. Hey! Oh, he throws it away. Kelly's going to come all the way around and try to score. He does with run number three, and Steve Sachs end up on first base. I tell you, great job by Buck Showalter down at third. He waved Sachs in all the way. And it's Tom said it's going to be a tough play. I thought Key was going to get him easy, but old Seaver said no, it's going to be a tough play. And then Sachs got down there so quickly, Old Root couldn't get around him and couldn't knock the ball down and went down the right field line. Here it is again. He tops it down the third base line. If he had let Gruber get it, it'd been easy. Been an easy play for Kelly Gruber. And I think Gruber was calling it too, and you can yep. see. Roberto Kelly never stopped coming around third base. Getting the green light from Buck Showalter, and it's three to nothing Yankees. That's another base hit for Sachs. And an error. So Mattingly, Don Mattingly, who is 0 for 1, grounded into a double play. His first time up after Kelly and Sachs had singled. That got in the Yankees' first run, but Don really not very happy the way he's swinging the bat. I think he's just collapsing the whole backside myself, yeah, Scooter. He really is. Are you? Yeah. All the fly balls that he's hitting with not much on him, just a little lazy no fly balls yeah. in the outfield. Not that good popping his bat. No, Madeline is average down to 265. Five home runs, 29 RBIs. Yeah. 
And it's 3 0. Do you think he'll swing? I hope so. I hope so, too. <laughs> I couldn't put it better myself. <laughs> I bet no. she does it. <laughs> That's one of the great mysteries, mysteries of the game of baseball. Really a hitter works and works and works to get the pitcher in the hole. And then Four you get 3 0, and, and they don't, you don't swing. Some guys just won't do it. Why won't swing at the first pitch, first strike of any pitcher, and then the 3 0 pitch? And swings at the fastball yeah. in on the hands. You can see how frustrated he is. He's taking a walk now, but this is so unfamiliar to him. And he's usually everything he hits. Look at who he couldn't get his arm. You're right, Tom was right in on. I mean, that's a nasty pitch. Yep. Look and at he that. just had a pitch to drive just before that. Mm -hmm. No, it's three and two to Mattingly with one out. Steve Sachs on second. Mattingly has always been a great two strike hitter. And that's a soft fly ball to left field. Sachs is going to tag. And will bluff the third. And George Bell, a good throw. Now that's another, that's what you were talking about. Now, that ball was right where he used to hit it real hard and would have been over Bell's head, but he's not getting a pop on not the ball. Not driving that ball in that left center alley, and that's something he has done so very well. A lot of the little things in the game here. If, St if Steve Sachs has been able to steal third, yeah, that'd be a run, right? Yeah, absolutely. And Sachs is five for five in stealing third base this year. So why didn't he go? I don't know. Tony Fernandez was doing a terrific job oh, in shortening his lead. Uh -huh. I mean, a terrific job. You think Fernandez doesn't know that fact and is going to yeah. keep him there? And Sachs never got off, never got more than one foot off of the dirt at second base. I kept looking at him and wonder if he'd go and wonder if he'd go. And it was because Fernandez, because Maddenly being a left hand hitter, can play around. Balboni skies it to Manny Lee at second base. But the Yanks come up with another run on two hits and they leave a man. We're done with two and a half innings here at the Sky Dome in Toronto. It's the Yankees three and the Blue Jays nothing. could win half a million dollars cash in Pick 10, the new game from New York Lottery. Play Pick 10 today, and you could be a half millionaire tomorrow. In Africa, the griot or storyteller used words or songs to pass down history from one generation to the next. They kept history alive. Today, the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture embodies the spirit of the griot with materials on nearly 200 black cultures around the world. Visit the Schomburg, 135th and Lenox Avenue, open Monday through Saturday. This message has been brought to you by Con Edison. Hey, Yankee fans, here are two great ways to enjoy all the summertime fun at the stadium. On Saturday, July 7th, Coca-Cola presents Yankee Glove Day as the Yanks battle the Twins at 3 o'clock. All fans 14 and under will receive a free Yankee baseball glove. Then on Sunday, July 8th, Gatorade presents Yankee Sports Bag Day at 1.30, and all fans will receive a free Yankee Sports Bag. So make a double play with the Yanks for this giveaway weekend. Get your tickets now. Bottom of the third inning here in Toronto, and the Yanks with a three to nothing lead. And there is Mel Hall, who has shown up late to the game today. And there's his buddy Deion Sanders, Deion Sanders right next on to his him. right. Evidently, personal family problems in New York. Mel went Hall this morning. And as we are told, George Grant found out that's a fair ball inside the bag for Junior Felix, and that will be extra bases. Junior Felix, a leadoff double here for the Blue Jays. And they're half of the third inning. Talking about Mel Hall, he had gone home evidently this morning. Yeah, family problems in New York. 
and could not get back in time for the start of today's game but is here and taped up and ready to go. And he had a big night last night. And he'll be available. As long as his name's on that lineup card, he's available. Oh, no, that's right. <laughs> Tony Fernandez. Tony didn't like that at all. Jim Joyce, the umpire behind home plate. And Fernandez doesn't like it. One reason is because he's not looking for a fastball Ooh, inside off man, of Dave LaPointe. That was a good pitch. Well, he doesn't want, he's not That's looking for right, the fastball. Yeah. He's looking for something soft here. And goes right back in there, too. Yep. Good pitching by LaPointe. Felix on second with a leadoff double, his 17th double of the season. Fernandez grounded out to Espinosa in the first. That'll get the job done. Felix moves, moves over to third, and with one out, Kelly Gruber will be the hitter. about the point Tom when he keeps the ball down they're not going to hit the long ball and makes them have their weight out forward and they don't get too much on it but he's got a tough customer now that he does and that will score a run Phoenix had to retreat and tag but Gruber hit it right on the nose a sacrifice fly and it's a three to one ball game boy did he hit that one if he'd have got that one up in the air, it would have been over that 400 foot sign. So the Blue Jays get on the board. RBI number 60 for Kelly Gruber. Mm. Well, I think you're right, Scooter. He's just taking off when it gets to Kelly. With the speed of Junior Felix at third, no chance for Roberto Kelly to throw him out. And the Blue Jays are on the board. George Bell for right field, and that's going to fall in front of our field. A little dying quail to right field. Off speed pitch right off the end of the yep. bat, Scooter. Couldn't have placed it any better. Hacking a guy that big and strong. <laughs> hit a ball like that. <laughs> they get a lot of those. Oh, they sure do, don't they? John Olrude with two outs. I'll tell you what, you'd rather him see a minute like that yeah. than the other, the other two that he had last night, huh? That's right. You don't get too mad. With six home runs, 21 RBIs, two of those home runs coming last night. Sky to left field. And Jim Leyritz puts it away. The Blue Jays come up with a run. And Dave LaPointe able to shut him down, Scooter. He sure did. And on the Toyota scoreboard at the end of three, it's the Yankees three and the Blue Jays one. My athlete's foot kept flaring up. I'd put it out and it'd just flare up again. Then my doctor told me about Tenactin. It cures recurring athlete's foot. Use it regularly, and it'll keep the fire from coming back. Tenactin puts the fire out for good. Brady Bunch makes room for Webster. We're going to have an addition to the family. All right! 
Here's the story. I'm going to be the happiest kid in the whole world. The Brady Bunch, followed by Webster. Weekdays starting at 5.30 on Channel 11. Oscar, you'll never believe this. They're New York's favorite roommates. You're a lunatic. Together for better. Felix, I knew you had a teddy bear. I didn't know you had a doll. I'm normal. Or for worse. He wants to be more like me. Oh, oh, that's nice. I'm the lunatic. Tony Randy. My dinner's ruined. Jack Klugman. That's perfect. What's perfect? The Odd Couple. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Starts Monday night at 11 on Channel 11. All right, we're back, and George Grant is back. Slips right in that seat vacated by Seaver. Looks like an altogether different Yankee team, isn't it, George? Last two nights. Well, things are going better than they have for a while, and they feel confident that they can win games, especially the, the game in Milwaukee yeah. and then holding on last night, scoring some runs against the Blue Jays. But yeah, that's the way it's been, Scooter. The Blue Jays win in New York, and the Yankees win up here, too. Isn't that isn't something? It? <laughs> it's unbelievable. Blue Jays have knocked the Yankees out of the box so many times down at Yankee Stadium. Barfield struck out his first time up. And two balls, no strikes on Jesse. Three to one, the Yanks lead here in the top of the fourth. High fly to deep right center, way back, but Mookie gets it wide. Against the wall. A towering fly ball. It was a funny thing, George didn't sound like he got all of that. It was pretty evident from batting practice today that the ball is moving today. The Yankees took early batting practice, and Mike Blowers must have hit 30 or 35 balls into the seats during no, batting practice okay. during his early BP. The ball just seems to be carrying even more than it was last night. I tell you, he hit that right off the end of his bat, and it took Mookie right back to the 400-foot sign. It's a sellout. The place is packed. It's been a humid day today, so you combine all of that, and the air is like an inversion factor here. All right, Leverage takes a strike. Leverage trying to check his swing, bounce back to the pitcher first time up. He's got a lot of big base hits for the Yankees. And one and one. Jimmy Key on the mound. Bounce it a short. Tough hop for Fernandez, but he makes the play. Thought for a minute it might bounce over his head, but Fernandez knows how to play this artificial surface. And he has such a great presence about him. You could see him look at the runner. He looked at Larritz as he came out of the box, and he was making a decision whether he had to charge or whether he could wait. Now he knows he's in control. Good, strong throw to first, and he had time to nail him. All right, here's Blowers, and Mike takes a strike on a breaking pitch. Last time up, Mike took a fastball right down Broadway for strike three. Got to relax. Just start cutting and slashing. Hey, rips that one. Nope. Son of a gun. Didn't get it up in the air. I thought maybe it was going to get over the head of Bell, but three up, three down at the end of three and a half. Yankees three and the Blue Jays one. Thunder rolls this summer. So don't miss Paramount's new movie, Days of Thunder. And stop at Exxon for your Days of Thunder family fun book. An inside look at the filming of Days of Thunder and news on NASCAR racing, games, driving tips, and all sorts of puzzles. They're free at participating Exxon stations. But they're going fast. Well, I don't want to spend a lot of money. And I want V6 performance. And, oh yeah, plenty of room for a night out with the girls. Maybe power windows and locks, you know, just a couple of little things. And How about $750 cash back? Yes, thank you. That is what I'm looking for. Cavalier with base prices starting under $8,100 at your Chevrolet Geo dealer. We've got what you're looking for. 
Channel 11 and Mitsubishi, with a little help from the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun, will give one of you two eclipses. First, a brand new breathtaking all-wheel drive Eclipse GSX Turbo. Second, a week's vacation for two with the fabulous Hyatt Regency Waikoloa in Hawaii for the world's best view of this summer's lunar eclipse. It's a once-in-a-lifetime chance. So enter before July 10th at your nearest tri-state Mitsubishi dealer. Back at the Sky Dome in Toronto, let's take a quick look at the scoreboard in the American League. Boston leads Baltimore 2 to nothing. top of the fourth inning. Boddicker against Ballard. Gary Gaetti is homered in the second. Minnesota leads Kansas City 2 0. Saber Hagen against Tappany. Everything else Cleveland, Milwaukee, Seattle, Texas, Detroit, California, Chicago, Oakland later on in the American League. Over in the National League, Scooter Dodgers, they've won five in a row, leading Cincinnati 4 2. They're now on the bottom of the fourth inning. Mattingly makes the play unassisted. One man out. Pittsburgh and Montreal, they are scoreless, top of the third. Terrell against Gross. Philadelphia and New York. Frank Viola going for the Mets. New York leading at 5-1, to one, now top of the third inning. San Diego and Atlanta, rain delay there. And you heard earlier today that Bobby Cox has taken over as manager of the Atlanta Braves. Russ Nixon was relieved of his duties today. And San Francisco and Houston will be a little bit later on. All right, here's Glen Allen Hill, and way out in front of that chain, strike one. Dave LaPointe pitching a masterful game so far. Getting those right hand hitters to be way out in front, hit a lot of ground balls. Strike two. And two strikes. Got him. Oh, that's it. And if he had hit that, all he'd got was a little ground ball. He's keeping that ball out of the strike zone, but it looks so big coming up. Now, Gil Allen Hill will strike out a little bit. In fact, at times, he'll strike out a lot. Last year at Syracuse, in 483 at-bats, he struck out 107 times. And, in fact, in one year at Kingston in the Carolina League, 466 at-bats, he struck out 211 times. Wow. So he'll whiff a little bit, but last year at Syracuse, he led the International League in home runs, hits, total bases, so he can give you some power. Yeah, speaking of Syracuse, we got a couple of visitors, Steve Wilkins and Jay LeBaire. From Syracuse, New York, big Yankee fans. They're standing right in back of us. And that's outside. Manny Lee flied to center field his first time up. A ball, one strike, two out. And the Yanks leading three to one, bottom of the four. A little high and tight, two and one. If you're just joining us, the update Mel Hall was not with the club in time for batting practice, and when the game started, he walked into the Yankee clubhouse at 8-11 this evening. Oh, what? No. Nope. I thought he had it. As he slipped, the ball just popped out of his glove. That'll be a base hit. What a great try by Sachs. Another look at this one as Steve Sachs going to his right tries to get a glove on it takes the tricky hop and Lee with good speed beats the play to first it'll go as a base hit as Mookie Wilson steps up all right here's Mookie struck out his first time up side out of play to continue the update on Mel Hall he re-entered the Yankee clubhouse at 811 he did tell me as he entered the clubhouse that he was in New York he had left 
Toronto at 5.30 this morning, flew to Montreal, changed planes, went to New York to take care of what he did, called a family matter, flew back this afternoon from Newark to Toronto, and he called New York Yankee manager Stump Merrill late this afternoon saying that he would be late, would not make it in time for batting practice, but had hoped to be back by around 7 o'clock. But the plane, as you look at Mel Hall, who is back now, the plane was delayed, and then he got caught in traffic as he explained it coming back to the ballpark. Stump Merrill has said he will reserve any comment and disciplinary decision until he has time to go over all the specifics of the matter. All right, well said, George. There's a throw to first, and he's back. Manny Lee, not too much of a threat to run. He's tried to steal twice, made one, but caught one. And that's Stump. Must have been quite a blow for Stump Merrill, George. Here, the Yankees win three in a row, and Hall, one of the most productive, all of a sudden he's not here. Fouled it off. He's alive. When things are going well, you don't want anything to disrupt the train that's going down no. the track. And after winning three in a row and a good frame of mind on the ball club, you don't need something like this to start off with. And secondly, not to someone who's been productive on your club. Right. Hopefully, uh, it'll be resolved. And when everything is discussed and finalized, the club gets back to baseball. Right, and they started off there leading three to one. Two men out. Oh, I got him again. Well, Mookie having a rough time against the Yankees. Nothing across. A man left. End of four. The Yankees three and the Blue Jays one. How do you get real premium beer taste in a non-alcoholic brew? You start with a real premium beer. That's how Anheuser-Busch makes new Odul's. Odul's is carefully brewed, fully fermented, and cold aged. Then the alcohol is naturally removed, retaining all the great taste. So how do you get real premium beer taste in a non-alcoholic brew? Ask for an ice-cold Odul's. Odul's, the taste will win you over. In today's competitive car market, there's one place that gives you the advantage. The advantage of Dodge Caravan, America's best-selling minivan. More cargo room than Chevy Lumina vans. And the highest customer satisfaction ranking of any minivan sold in the U.S. Plus the advantage of a great selection. And up to $1,032 in savings on popular options packages on select models. There's only one place that has the edge. It's Advantage Dodge. Loaded with features, built for speed, and with full-range autofocus, it can stop on a dime. The newest VHS camcorder from JVC. We just made recorded history again. Once you consider the complications of other camcorders, the best plug for JVC is no plug at all. It fits right in your VHS VCR. JVC. We just made recorded history again.